Hello, I'm Marcello Rolando, the Reasonable Voice, thanking you for joining us and becoming one of the reasonable voices heard round the world. Impeachment, Pence, Purdue, Drunk Drivers, and Father Time. Like 9-11, what we thought could never happen in America is happening again. But in 2019, it is administered by a pretend president and his acting government, conniving with the foreign power determined to destroy our ability to weather Franklin's admonishment. A republic, if you can keep it. Streaming Michael Cohen's reboot, channeling John Dean's There's a Cancer on the Presidency, impeaching for our children, we bequeath them Mike Pence. Few American presidents have worn sobriety as the only proof of their character, while daily crashing through clearly marked humanitarian stop signs, putting pedal to the metal to T-bone both America's history and its potential. Confident we won't defeat ourselves by surrendering to the foolishness of self-inflicted vengeful violence, nor to the denial of the fearfully fatigued, because peaceful assembly and voter registration are not weak sisters, but rather, like United We Stand, the bridge that has restored America after revolution, civil war, two world wars, 60s assassinations, and September 2001. Seeing through corporatism's haze, the wise set aside all Trump-induced chaos rattling around in the echo chamber of a fourth estate that has lost its way, for media smirks are laughing America to death. Gun owners know Wayne LaPierre's malleable, maniacal marionette-in-chief of misinformation is, like Cheney, Pence, and Putin's Moscow Mitch, another bad man with a gun, an adversary to truth, apathetic to the human condition, profiteering off the sacred office he has careened off course. So, answering 2020's call, the rational rise to eject Trump Senate enablers, not with tiki torches, but with reasserted government of by and for the people. Having learned from Odessa grandmother Sandra Saxton, who faced the hateful rage of a mass murderer, but unlike her president and our Congress, took immediate action, saving her family from NRA-sponsored mass hysteria, we now unite. To unscrupulous marketing of e-cigarettes and opiate producers, speeders whizzing by school buses with flashing red lights, drunk drivers and people who supply civilians with military-styled AR weapons, we now say enough. Witnessing the difference between investigative reporting and the laziness of talking heads repeating a liar is a liar, we are, like time, moving on. Recognizing the characteristic opposites of the spineless, intimidating NOAA cowardice, we emulate the heroism and integrity of the National Weather Service. Voters get it. While a president may not be dumb enough to share classified information with foreign enemies, a pretend president could be treasonous enough to do so. Flint knows it. If Bush Cheney hadn't launched 1% of our population into perpetual war, taxpayer money might be replacing brain destroying lead laden water pipes, causing Legionnaires' disease and increasing pneumonia deaths. Patriots know it and reject abusing commander-in-chief title to divide and conquer Pentagon leadership and congressional oversight, to profit from Air Force sleepovers at failing resorts, even if, miraculously, religious hypocrite Pence isn't culpable. Visionaries know it, and refuse to join a pretend president's race with climate change at the expense of homeland security. Now, we the people embrace national choices and individual responsibilities for a presidential riddle wrapped in an acting government mystery inside the enigma of his resort-tweeted military-industrial complex, refusing to permit the undoing of his oath of office by foreign policy for financial gain. Now, rejecting public and private leaders who profit from the opposition of a child's future, whether female, people of color, LGBTQ, or refugees, we ascend. Teachers know it. Scientists are not America's enemy, but the stewards of Earth and all life upon it. Armed once again with the conviction of we hold these truths to be self-evident, we legally entrap impeachable producers entangled and vaporizing our future, now blowing smoke-screen billions to escape their tobacco predecessors' fate. 
family fun at movies, parks, concerts, schools, or even walking dogs have become bloodied. Not just because of bad men with guns and drunk drivers, but men in corporate and government suits, too lost, gathering their thirty pieces of silver to notice their time has passed on. Yes, we have stepped in quicksand of hate, racism, sexual discrimination, and perpetual war that challenges our best while exposing our worst. Allowing extreme individual focus, we fail to see family and national unity's time limits, because many things we believe true never were. Filmmaker friend Kent and I rarely got to work together, so we made time for lunch every three or four months for personal catch-up and, of course, movie-making brainstorming. He with a beer, me iced coffee. At our last lunch, he asked to send me a play he'd written for my director's opinion. Then, back to work, looking forward to September's lunch. America's first murderer was hanged in 1630. Its first drunk driver, arrested in 1897. Although conservative Republican Texan evangelical Christian Kent C. Williamson and liberal Democrat Roman Catholic New Yorker me were solid friends, just like our country, the United States of America, our next lunch was never promised. Thank you, and join us. Become one of the reasonable voices heard round the world. Peace be with you, Kent, and with your spirit. Amen.